All right, y'all. Let me give you a spoiler alert. It's not Vice President Kamala Harris. I ain't got that kind of pool to have Vice President Kamala Harris on the Roller Martin Unfiltered show. This short of notice, maybe sometime in the future, but it is one of my favorite people and one of your favorite people. I could give a long, drawn out explanation, but without further ado, welcome back for the first time to the Roland Martin Unfiltered show on the Black Star Network, Erica Savage Wilson. Hey, girl! <laughs> Hey, Boo. Hey, Reese. Hey, G. Okay, I'm going to get the panel the time to say, hey, go ahead, go ahead, everybody. Get it out, get it out, get it out. Yes. That was mwah, chef's kiss. That was so beautiful. <laughs> e, what's oh. up? What's going on, G? Hi, Faraj. I haven't met you, but I've been watching you. Good to see you. I'm just glad to be here. And to the RMU production team, I love you all. You all have no idea how awesome that production crew is. The folks that work behind the scenes, they're also in front of the scenes as well. They are absolutely amazing. So much love to the RMU production crew and to our big brother, Roland. Yes, Roland. The only thing missing is Roland. I'm sorry, Roland, if I stole your thunder. But I was like, I can't be on the Roland Martin Unfiltered show <laughs> and be in this host here <laughs> without checking in with my sis, my girl, Erica. Erica, you look as beautiful, as amazing. I want you to tell the audience about what you're up to now. You've been producing our publishing uh, medium pieces as well as back in the swing of things with some IG Lives and some newsletters. So please, let the audience know what you're up to. Thank you so much, Reese. And y'all, first of all, y'all, please light up social media with how awesome Reese has done it in the guest chair. It's been great <laughs> all week. But of course, I'm always partial to the Thursday VIP panel, as we dubbed it almost two years ago. Yes. Always, always partial. So please light up social media, letting everybody, the whole world know how awesome <laughs> Our good sis, Reese Colbert, Black Women Views, is a follow you must have. Um, I am, y'all, I'm healing. Hmm. Um, that is probably one of the best ways that I can put it. And my healing is coming through um, really just enjoying um, being outside of the other side of what I was engaged in, which was pretty much work 24-7 uh, what I have been up to as of late is um, definitely a bunch of appointments still, um, but doing, as Reese noted, writings. I'm working on a piece now um, that I'm going to be sending out, hoping that it will be pitched. So uh, USA Today, Blabity, all of y'all look up. I'm going to be sending this piece to you all. Mm -hmm. um, also, I definitely, um, as Reese said, I did one Facebook and IG Live just last month to let everyone know that uh, I'm, you know, healing. I'm still here, but I'm taking that very, very seriously. And um, as a result of that, uh, one of my um, favorite people, my mentor, Dr. Avis Jones, the Weaver, who kicked off this week hosting um, in that very seat that Reese is occupying so wonderfully, um, has really um, folded me in. And I will be launching a podcast, another podcast, Wonderful. January of 2022. This will be focused on what I'm working um, and what I've been really moving through my healing, which is the reframed brain. That is going to be the name of the podcast, the reframed mm -hmm. brain. And what I have learned through this brain injury and through a myriad of other injuries that I've endured is that the thing that we are all connected by is this global pandemic trauma mm. that we are not mm. to take lightly what we have been experiencing in this pandemic, not just COVID-19 in and of itself, but the anxiety, the um, insomnia, uh, mm. the stressors, the worry. Um, Reese talked about having a baby mm. during the pandemic and the um, joy that she would have with having that room filled with friends and families of well wishes that was um, significantly reduced to um, her, her husband and her mother-in-law and her mother. Um, mm. There has been a real social impact that we are going to be um, experiencing here this next uh, wave in 2022 and beyond. And so no one has to have a brain injury to understand that brain health is so very important. And so the reframe brain is really going to be bringing to the audience, not just letting you know that I'm a brain injury champion, 
but how we are all very much so included and connected by um, the trauma that we have experienced through this pandemic. And I want for people to be able to live a more intentional life, understanding that there's some things that you just don't have to endure. Mm. Ooh, preach in. This is why we love you so much, Erica, the reframed <laughs> brain. I love that. You know, in, yes. your, in your medium piece, you talked about the new Erica. We love the new Erica, the old Erica. <laughs> but for people who want to know, like, what's different now, you like you said, you're healing. And that's a process. That's an iterative process. It's not a straight line. Uh, give people a little bit of insight into parts of what you can share of the new Erica. Sure. I really appreciate the question. Um, it is definitely ongoing. I... Um, and this is not a downer, this is just very re real. Um, the unseen part of what I'm experiencing is that people see me and they see Erica. Mm -hmm. What um, everyone is not seeing is um, the heavy lift that it takes for me to move throughout the day. Um, I have a wonderful, wonderful medical care team, um, home health care, um, occupational therapy, a myriad of, of team members um, within the medical community that help me. But I've been very honest and very frank about um, the uh, neuropsychologist, my psychiatrist, and my therapy, uh, my therapist that I, I meet with um, throughout on a weekly basis. That the mental warfare, um, because I don't have the capabilities that I used to. For instance, every day for at least two and a half hours, my body shuts down mm. because my brain has to breathe. Um, me being on social media, the way that I've been able to come back into social media, I'm not able to really participate in the way that I was before because I have light sensitivity. The scrolling activity is um, difficult on the brain. It's not good on any of our brains, but particularly when the brain has been compromised by an injury, um, like the one that I sustained being hit by an 18-wheeler twice while traveling mm -hmm. for work. So it wasn't just I was, you know, traveling. I was traveling for work when this at the time that the accident occurred. Um, what people also don't see is that it takes me longer to process. So I love Roland Martin and Filter. I love political news, just like all of these panelists. It's a heavy investment to um, actually um, present the information that the audience receives, whether it's in two hours, whether it's a segment that's six or seven minutes. What um, Reese, what Faraj, what um, Dr. Carr, what they are listening to all day long it's not just political news, it's social coverage, it's via the radio, they're looking at things. So there's constant consummation of this. And then to be able to um, break down that minutia into bites where the audience can receive it outside of having a personal life, that is a lot. Mm. Y'all, I do not have that capacity right now. Mm. And it is liberating to be able to say that because that is where I am right now. I can remember, and I still face this, um, uh, my doctor cleared me to begin to drive again, so I drive locally pretty much. Mm -hmm. And I uh, can remember breaking down crying and having to call um, my partner and tell him, I'm like, I'm lost. Mm -hmm. I'm literally going less than a mile up the road, and I am lost. So it's things like that. The setting that I have to do um, when I go to an appointment and also, I'm so glad, Reese, you had um, Dr. Kuntz on and you all had that um, great discussion around Black maternal health. Mm -hmm. When you think about what the expectation is for a woman, for a person, after they have given birth, after they have gone through a traumatic process, which birth is, it's not that easy. There is that whole snapback term, which I greatly mm. despise. There I is no snapback. I hate it too, sis. Mm -hmm. There is no snapping back. There is a hold adjustment because something is died, just like the way mm. that we were in 2019 is no longer. That is the former. This is the new. How do I make that adjustment? Mind, body, and spirit. And so for Erica, these AirPods that I have, in, mm -hmm. this is my number one safety dynamic. If I do engage in the public, I have these on, right, mm. because it keeps me safe. Mm. Um, I know that people aren't going to run up to me because I can't handle a bunch of humans at one time, no more than about three or four mm. at one time. And then I'm also very aware of where I am, the exit, how long I'm going to be there, and then what my next stop, which is usually home. So there is a lot of rerouting that has happened. Um, the capacity to 
um, do laundry and things like that, I celebrate it because I'm able to do those things, but it's very, very concentrated and very strategic the way that I do that. So what people don't see with unseen injuries is the mental and then the emotional preparation. I'm a big holiday person. Mm -hmm. Everybody who knows me knows that I love Thanksgiving and Christmas. I literally had a mental crisis, breaking things, mm -hmm. breaking mm -hmm. things, because it was just me and my partner at home. Mm -hmm. I couldn't tolerate being around my family because I still can't tolerate traveling outside of about a 10, 15 mile radius. Those are the type of limitations that I am accepting in my present, understanding that things will improve in my future, but I have to accept it now because that's just where your girl is at. And it does not mean that I was not born and created to fly. Mm -hmm. I've done it. I'm going to do it in a much higher and different way. However, at the moment, with a brain injury, um, PTSD, anxiety, depression, um, and insomnia, which is mad crazy, mm. I have, with my plants and with my family support and support of my, my good sis, Reese, and just so many people who have really, um, um, really just kind of um, held me up, um, I have been able to manage. And I also want to mention as well, I talked about in my medium piece, the suicide attempt. Mm -hmm. It's very real. It happens to black folks. It happened to black people that believe in Jesus. It does not mean you're not a believer. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean that you're a person of faith. It means that your response to literally grieving your own death, or as I talked about with the pandemic, grieving what we were before, and where we are now and the constant reminders about social distancing and wearing masks and the anxiety that we feel about going outside into different areas or those that are having to return to in-office um, settings is real. And yeah. so the thoughts, those things that we can ideate on that say this is it no longer is very, very real. Having support that literally says I'm making space for you to grieve what was what is to come, what is now, is very, very important. And it does not mean um, that uh, we are um, somehow um, uh, n uh, not normal, as people would say. I don't mm -hmm. even know what that means now. Mm -hmm. But it does mean that we are human and that there's another well of empathy that we must introduce into our own personal lives. Wow. Uh, Erica, you are extraordinary. And sharing that, I want people to just, I just thank you so much for that transparency because we have to expand the expectations that we put on black women. Black women need to heal, whether it's from a traumatic brain injury as what you're doing with people or uh, black women, men, people across the world are really suffering in this pandemic for a lot of reasons. And so your story and this reframed brain podcast that you are going to be doing is going to be just a blessing to so many people. I want to be respectful of your time, but I know that I cannot <laughs> end this segment without going to our big bro, Dr. Carr. Dr. Carr, uh, I want to hand the mic over to you uh, to talk to Erica for a moment. <laughs> I need to clear my throat because what we just witnessed, first of all, Reese, thank you. This is, uh, if Ron was sitting there, he probably would have had that picture. He probably got that picture that dude somewhere around Oh, God, here. no, no, did I? <laughs> I was saying, if Ron was there, you, know, you know what he would have done, Erica. But, <laughs> but no, thank you, Reese. Erica, I'm so glad to see you. I love you. And love what you do. just did, oh, my God, what you just did for, for all of us, for me, for everybody watching, for everybody who will watch, I just want to say to you, thank you, not only for your witness, your strength, your, uh, you say, you know, you, you're, you're working and sailing in a different way and soaring in a different way. And for those of us who have experienced you and will continue to love and experience you and surround you, I just want to say thank you, because that was more than a word. That was more than a, than a witness that was a roadmap. There are a lot of people suffering. Mm. All, of, all of us are suffering. And what you did, I, I'm going to play that for some folks. Mm. I'm going to watch it again, Bobby. <laughs> but I'm going to stop talking right now because I'm choking up thinking about it. Thank, th thank you, Reese. I love you, Erica. <laughs> <laughs> mm. I love you, Dr. Carr. Oh, no, sorry. sorry. Go ahead, Erica. Your response. Your response. 
Oh, I, um, I, first of all, I think everybody knows, you know, a person with a library is always somebody who is going to be deep into my heart anyway. My late grandmother um, is a, was a retired librarian and um, really intru- we could not walk into and I praise and I thank God for that, that as a young child, I have memories of walking to my grandparents' house and there was a library about the wall. And so I always say that and brag on that about you, Dr. Carr or excuse me, Greg, because it is something to have a person, a human, but a brother who is literally a walking library, a national treasure. Mm -hmm. I would say, not just in our community and that Howard University is so blessed to have him, but literally in our nation that the information that this audience gets is privy to Mm -hmm. every Thursday My God, Mm -hmm. there is no reason that we should not be engaging and stepping in our power. So I mean this from the bottom of my heart. Thank you, my brother. It was excellent that we were able to be in person and be in the studio and connect and laugh and talk and then text as well. Um, But to be able to experience a great car who is a mind, you all have to join him on Saturdays on YouTube with Karen Hunter (laughs) in class Mm -hmm. with Carr. Um, so you can get more of that. But we have to own what we are getting on this day, on every Thursday from 6 to 8, from the great mind of Greg Carr. I, I love mm. you. Love you. Always. Love you. Follow <laughs> your footsteps. It's you know a family reunion. <laughs> <laughs> Faraji, you stepped in to the I great... I say, look, look. The great Erica Savage Wilson shoes. So you get uh, a word to, you know, your predecessor. And hopefully she'll be back at some point. But Faraji, a couple words. Look, I just want to say, Sister Erica, first and foremost, um, it's been an honor and a privilege and a real pleasure to be on a panel with Dr. Cotton Reese. When they threw me in, I'm the new kid on the block. I saw people on YouTube and Facebook like, who the hell is he? Where's Eric? <laughs> I was thinking to myself, oh boy. (laughs) 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 I'm gonna be honest with you. But you know what I mean? They have embraced me, and therefore I have learned about you because of the great knowledge and wisdom that you have always expounded being on this platform and on this panel. So I'm really just you know, I'm just humbled because of who you are. But more importantly, I'm, I'm truly, truly touched, Sister Erica, by your story. Um, and, I, you know, I'm looking at the our watchers on YouTube, joining them in the chat. I mean, we got hearts going everywhere, people saying, and I just want to be a conduit, a vessel for you. They are saying they love you. I mean, you know, they love you. When I say they love you, I mean, the hearts are filling up. People are saying that Erica is my best friend. You know, this sister is always bringing it. They said your story. I want to share this with you. I'm being, I'm being, I'm I'm just, they're saying that your story, look, Banana said no one can fill Erica's shoes. All right, Banana, there we go. Go ahead, keep it moving, (laughs) keep it moving. Um, And look, Kentia, nothing but hearts. I mean, hearts, 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 and everybody's saying, God bless you. Mm -hmm. But your testimony tonight, sis, your testimony is one that that I truly, truly believe that we're all going to gain something from. I mean, that's that's a powerful testimony. And, Mm -hmm. you know, I loved how you framed it. Whether you are a believer in Jesus or not doesn't mean that you don't go through no trials and Mm -hmm. and challenges. And, and and that right there stuck for me and it resonated with me because, you know, so many of us, especially, you know, my wife and I, we have these conversations. She's like, I hate when people say black women are strong. She said, because I can't. She told me, she said, if I'm always strong, when can I break down? When can I be tired? When can I feel mm-hmm. like I need you to help me through the day and all of those things? So I'm starting to just my appreciation for the struggle of black women is becoming deeper and deeper listening to you, listening to Reese and so many other powerful women that come on this panel because y'all tell a story that men, and I think Dr. Carr can attest to it, that men just need to listen to. Yes, sir. 
And mm. just to hear you say that you reached out to your partner and you got to, you know, just for that support, but you got to, it's hard for you to carry yourself through a day. I mean, mm. I'm just, look, sis, look, whenever you ready, whenever you ready, you, you don't have to bump those two off. You could just be like, Faraji, I'm ready. I'll be like, yes, ma'am. I'm just... <laughs> Just backing off the chair. I'll be like, all right, yes, ma'am. It was nice knowing y'all. Thank you for your time. <laughs> oh, you're family now. You're not going anywhere. <laughs> Erica, we just cannot say enough how much we love you. Um, if you're out there, you heard Erica, she's writing. USA Today, Blavity, The Grio, uh, Essence Magazine, Ebony, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. If you are an editor, if you are a person who has the access, who heard Erica's story and you want more people to hear it, reach out to her. Her medium piece is called Things Not Seen. It is a must read. Her upcoming podcast is called The Reframed Brain. Erica, tell us how to get in contact. Oh, one more thing, you didn't ask me to do this, but if you want to pour in to Erica, give her a love offering, it's cash app, dollar sign, Erica Savage Wilson. Okay, y'all getting all this free okay. testimony, pour into our good <laughs> sis, Erica Savage Wilson, okay? I can't let that go without saying that, but Erica, please tell the audience, the family, how to get in contact with you, where to follow you, um, if they want to hear more from you and what you have coming up. Yes, thank you so much, Reese. And I gotta say thank you to Reese. She kicked off a catch app like Avalanche back <laughs> I, earlier this year, and I was just like, Whoa. Was so much. thank you. Let me tell you something. Do you understand <laughs> who in this is she should be getting paid for all of the work that she does for the disinformation and making sure that people stay okay. off of Madam Vice President, our first <laughs> there we go. woman. <laughs> Vice president, <laughs> first woman, okay? She ought to be getting paid for that. So thank you so much, sis, because I'm not working nine months and, and I'm not I'm not able to go back in that capacity for a myriad of issues. Um, how you can get in touch with me and stay connected with me um, is at one Erica Savage. Um, I'm on Twitter. I'm also on um, IG and Facebook. That way there's a Linktree app. It takes you so you'll be able to see the reframe brain, um, the page is not up yet, but it's already landed. I also just created a TikTok account um, so that I'm going to be releasing short form content that way so people mm. can understand more about the reframe brain and just understand how to engage people with unseen injuries. Because again, we are all globally connected um, by trauma and by this serious pandemic event we've all experienced. So a lot of the things that I'm experiencing or some of the things I'm experiencing we have all experienced it collectively as well. So um, check me out on TikTok. I've not done a video just yet, but just created that this week. And it's at the Reframe Brain. And then, as always, um, comments that you leave in social media. Um, if I have the ability to go through and respond, I will respond. But please um, see me there. And if you um, would love to engage with me in my writing. You can also go to that Linktree site, which is um, Linktree Erica Savage Wilson, and it's on my Twitter page, it's on my Instagram page, and for those of us that are still hanging out on Facebook, it's on Facebook as well. That way you'll be able to keep in touch with all things Erica Savage Wilson, and I am still making noise politically here and there. Yeah. Um, I just released a newsletter, so um, when you go to Linktree, you can uh, get subscribed on there as well if you want to get some of my power talks that I release twice a month. Um, through that. Well, I, Erica, you got to stick around for the closing moment because, you know, it's you been a while. It. It's been a while. So thank you so much for joining us. <laughs> Good sis. <laughs> That's it for us tonight. I want to thank my panel, the normal, the yes. regular panel, Dr. Greg yes. Carr from the Department of Afro-American Studies at Howard University and radio um, TV host Faraji Mohammed. Thank you for, uh, and Erica. Yes. We're right. taking it back, throwing it back with That's Erica. Right. We oh, cannot right. wait to see more from you and the reframed brain. Thank you so much for being here. Great job, Reese. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Yeah. Excellent yeah. job, Reese. Is she? Love you, Army Ooh. family. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, look, black women, black women was blowing it out this week. <laughs> hey, Dr. Carr, I was saying the same thing. This is a black women show right here. I'm going to sit back and shut up.
Yes, sir. <laughs> they left. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. All right, folks. Back to our roadmark unfiltered video in just one moment. Make sure that our stories are told. Uh, thank you for being the voice of Black America, Roland. I love y'all. All momentum we have now, we have to keep this going. The video looks phenomenal. See, this is the difference between Black Star Network and Black-owned media and something like CNN. You can't be Black-owned media and be scared. It's time to be smart. Bring your eyeballs home. You dig? 